Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Government Services. What have we learned from the Royal Commission into RoboDebt about concerns raised by those representing the RoboDebt victims? To be called to the Minister for Government Services. I thank the member for Macon for his question. Over the last two weeks, I've updated the House about Royal Commission evidence how various groups in the community warn the government about the unlawful robo-debt scheme, the whistleblowers, the lawyers, the media, the brave victims. But there's another group that the Royal Commission has heard evidence from, the welfare advocates. These people were underfunded. They tirelessly, continually warned about robo-debt on behalf of our most vulnerable. Specifically, the Royal Commission has heard from respected welfare advocates Genevieve Bolton, Catherine Boyle and Catherine Eagle. Importantly, they reminded the Royal Commission that Australia is a signatory to the United Nations International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, specifically Article 9. Article 9 is that social security is a right for people to access, or in other words, it's not an optional charity to be taken by whim from the government. These advocates further gave evidence that they repeatedly told the former coalition government they had concerns with the averaging process, the automatic application of a 10 per cent interest fee, the unreliability of the automated process. The victims had to chase information from employers who were no longer in business. The victims were told at Centrelink that they first would um, have to borrow money from payday lenders or use their credit cards in order to pay unlawful debts, that there were victims who were fleeing domestic violence, who were homeless, the first time they knew that they had a Centrelink debt, a robo-debt debt, was when the debt collectors found them. The victims were told that, in a significant departure from previous practice before the coalition government, that they had, to, they had the onus— Order. The minister will resume his seat. Order. Members of my right. Members of my right. The Attorney-General will cease interjecting. I'll hear from the manager of in business. Well, Mr. Speaker, you have ruled on this repeatedly. The, mem the minister is a repeat offender. Uh, the principle is clear that he ought not to be drawing conclusions about the conduct of individuals who are parties to the proceedings. He risks compromising the Royal Commission by doing this. Yep. And once again, he's right, doing exactly seat. what he. Resume your seat. On numerous order, the manager of in business is correct. On numerous occasions, I've reminded the minister I want him to answer the question with respect to the evidence and not put any conjecture onto any findings or any outcomes. And if he does so, I will uh, ask him to resume his seat. And I call the Minister for Government Services. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I, I want to say for the record that whilst the truth was uncomfortable for those listening to it, it was more uncomfortable for the robo-debt victims. And everything I'm saying is evidence. These are facts. And no amount of interjections from the member for Bradfield changes the truth. The minister will now, continue indeed. with his answer. Pardon? The minister will continue with his answer. Thank you. Of the spread of clients, the evidence shows that of the, the advocates put forward that of the spread of Resume clients. Your seat. The minister can continue with his answer. Thank you. The evidence shows from the advocates that of the spread of clients. Are you Order. The Minister for Skills will cease interjecting. This is a serious issue for the Parliament. I'll hear from the Manager of Opposition Business. Speaker, the principle is very clear. The Royal Commission is charged with re reaching conclusions as to fact. That is exactly yes. what is in the terms of reference. The yes. Minister is repeatedly Resume, trampling resume your seat. The minister, the, the minister was eight seconds in, and he was in his opening remarks talking about evidence, and I'm going to listen carefully to make sure he is referring to the evidence. And if he doesn't, he, he will have one last time and he will be resuming his seat. Order! The minister has the call. For the benefit for the member of Bradfield, read from page 996 of the evidence. That's what I'm quoting from. Of the spread of clients who Order. were contacted by these advocates, 37 per cent 37 per cent of the robot victims these advocates represent had a disability. The manager will cease interjecting. 19 per cent were homeless. 12 per cent were victims of domestic violence or in danger of it. In summary, the advocates said we consistently raised our concerns about robot which we believed to be unlawful. It consistently fell on deaf ears. 
And I also wish to advise the House that as of 2 o'clock today, the government has announced at the request of the Royal Commission an extension to its reporting dates to 30 June this year.